What's up guys, it's Hatai7 RCT Gaming once again, bringing you another video, and this time around this is basically the third out of the mini series that I wanted to do for you guys uh, about uh, emulation on 2019 and what's good today. Of course, I spoke uh, extensively about the Dolphin emulator in my last video. This time around I wanted to feature uh, Samu, of course, because uh it's kind of difficult not to mention one and the other when talking about either of them because they, they they're very similar in in many ways and how they came to the to the to being to the market you know they, how they came out um and how they've been developing at a very fast pace is very similar one to the other uh dolphin on the one hand is the veteran is the one that has all the time in the world to basically start from scratch and develop these tools and these things to make you know GameCube and, and Wii uh, emulation something you know to look forward to and they've done a pretty amazing job every iteration from the very beginning down to the very last one has marked improvements now Semi on the other hand I don't know if there's any other guys working there that used to work in, in Dolphin emulation, but I have to say that in the very little time compared to Dolphin that they've had, they've come and done amazing things. Um, I was a little skeptic, a little skeptical on, on the whole em Wii U emulation back when Semu came out. Just like with uh, Citra, which is another emulator that I'm going to be going into later on, that, that one does the 3DS. And it's because these, number one, they were very tough nuts to crack, so to speak, um, in terms of the difference between GameCube and Wii and Wii U. Even though a lot of trolls like to say that there's not much difference, yeah, whatever. The, the point is that you need is a different set of needs that you have in order to emulate uh even though they they are we are talking about you know power pc and 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 uh kind of like derivative of the power pc architecture in terms of cpu and they have like nintendo with their systems have basically scaled up when going through that and now the only change in that uh, whole structure and architecture is them moving away from power PC and as they go into the switch with you know more uh, PC like architecture with the switch and the Tegra uh, but as far as Samu goes Samu has to work still with the power PC architecture and they have to work with these graphics and these things and I don't know how they pulled it off but basically, in a very short amount of time, they managed to get up and running commercial titles. Now, one thing to point out when it comes to emulation is that they don't go right off the bat, you know, um, trying to emulate a game. When they start off as a project, usually they start with a small aspect of it, a feature, a way to get in somehow to reverse engineer the original console and then they work up from there. They try to run things that are similar or try to run it in a similar way and try to get that special formula in order to even approach a game. So they don't start off right off the bat saying, hey, let's do this, let's build it and let's run games. It's not as easy as that. So to my surprise, when I saw the first few games running on the on the Samu, and how far they ahead they were running with so little time, I was very surprised, very intrigued, but still a little skeptical. Now we're in 2019, and you know Samu has been out for quite some time. I do have, even though I haven't followed them in the same way that I followed Dolphin Emulator, I do have some of their old iterations and they are a far cry from what they have today. And I'm, that's what I'm here to show you guys, to give you that option in case you're curious, you have a new gaming PC, you want to test it out, you want to see how far it can go, um, how far these emulators can go with your PC, or if simply you're uh, old school gamer like myself and you love the Wii U 
which I know there are not going to be many of you, but I don't care. I'm one of them. And you just want to somehow, I don't know, in honor of those games, you have the system, but you want to see how well they could have looked with more power, then Semu is the right choice for that. I think the only choice. I don't know if there's any other out there. I haven't checked, but this is the real um, good choice for you to start. And I'm going to try to show you guys how to go through it so it doesn't become a pain. So let's go right into it. Alright guys, so here we are uh, with the next emulator, which is going to be uh, Semu. Now this one is of course uh, emulator, the up and rising emulator. Um, that's basically it covers Wii U, Nintendo Wii U games. Now last time around we did the Dolphin one and that was uh, it's still pretty much fun. It's one of the, the, the highest regarding emulator that I could that I could think of until this started making waves. Now this is nowhere near as good as the Dolphin because the Dolphin has the pedigree, has the experience, has a long time of being developed by these talented people so many to to count and this one is basically is a newer project it doesn't have as much time however what they lack in time and experience they have shown a, a, a incredible prowess to to technical um, abilities because these guys basically in a very short span of time managed to not only crack but actually make runnable versions of the Wii U games in very short time and that was in, in, in my eyes I've, I've been looking through and, and being part somehow from the outside just as, as an observer how these emulations um, are emulators are, are developed and how these people come together either in forums and stuff like that and they, they come together and try to build this puzzle out of so many like small little fragments that they come up with and then make it into a whole make it into something that's usable that's fun to use that anybody can use and they go through so much trouble and you know sometimes a lot of people forget uh, that you need to put a lot of work into this you need to put a lot of sweat and tears in order to get uh, some of these running now Aside from that, this is the one, it's the more recent version that you can get, that you can download. This is coming out like a new version like almost every week or every few weeks. They do have the most current one, the most uh, feature filled one at uh, for Patreons. Um, but the one that I'm showing here, which is 1.15.4b, is the one that you can actually download from their site straight on. Now, this does not have as much features as Dolphin or as many others. However, they have been adding with each iteration some features here and there that, you know, kind of make up for that. And the fact that the games run so well and that there are games that are much more advanced than the ones that the Dolphin, um, you know, emulates it's still a good thing and something that's worthwhile, you know, covering. Now, you're going to see here in options, you have the option to go full screen and stuff like that. The general settings basically cover everything that you can do to configure it to your liking. You have to manually put the game pass so the emulator finds it, something that it didn't have before. And I have a few versions here that I keep just to um, test testing purposes and stuff like that in case this version doesn't run one game I just run it in another and compare but this is still you know um, this is still work in progress it's still work in progress you do have more options than you did before if I close here and I for comparison's sake let me go in here real quick and go into the semi so I can show you guys. I have several here. The oldest one that I keep around is 1.7. I'm going to show you guys. This is what it looked like back then. The same one. This is 1.7. And 
and the options, even though it has graphics uh, packs and stuff like that, the options are very limited in terms of what you can do. So basically the stuff you can just grab it from here, but that's that's about it. Input settings. You have this, but compared to the most recent one, you're going to see that, yeah, a lot has changed. You have, you have your input settings, but now you have all of these features. Everything works kind of like right off out, out of the box, so to speak. A lot of configuration. But you're not here for the configurations. You're here to see how uh, it runs, and hopefully it's not going to crash. If it does crash, well, you know, that's the way it works. Um, <clears throat> thankfully, we don't have to bother with things like widescreen hack because all of these are HD. <laughs> However, there is a particular thing here which kind of separates it from other emulators is the fact that how a lot of the community has come together to create these graphic packs. And these graphic packs is something that stands out from this emulator because let's say in the case of Bayonetta you can go here and there's an option and you can download the latest community graphics packs. If I hit that it's gonna check no updates available because I already did that recently but let's say for Bayonetta 2, which I'm going to be putting up right now, you have enhancements, and you scroll down, you have a preset, and it tells you in the description what that does. In the case of graphics, I did change the resolution to make it 1440p. Again, just like the Dolphin, I just I don't want to go full 4K, even though I can actually play both of those in 4K without any sacrifice when I'm recording I need to tone it down a little bit because of course even though GPU and, and CPU are sharing the task I don't want to abuse that and make the, the game run extremely slow so but I like the fact that you have this option um, with a lot of the games they even they go as far in some games like Xenoblade Chronicles X where not only do you have enhancements you have workarounds for brightness. You have mods, mods integrated into this for everything from battle, blade, graphics, HUD, loot, music, everything. So it's it goes beyond the simple tweaking of graphics. You know, apparently the tools that are at your disposal for you to be part of this is a pretty good thing. So I am super happy. So, getting the jabbering out of the way, let's go into the first game and cross our fingers that everything is working fine. Let me see what controller I have here, and we'll... Let's see... Pro Controller... In that case, Pro Controller, Xbox One, load, and yep, should be here. Just the one that I'm using right now. It um, has here... This is the symbol that is connected. And test it. And yeah, everything should be ready to go. Additional settings. Rumble. Yeah, let's turn on. Oh, I guess not. No rumble. No rumble. Alright. Let's go ahead. Bayonetta 2. Now I'm going to go into full screen. Bayonetta, oh yeah, Bayonetta, oh yeah, Bayonetta. I have a file here so we don't have to go through again. It's not perfect, there's going to be some slowdowns here and there, but man, if you guys would have seen how this looked back in the day where the semi first came out, and how sluggish and uh, the graphics were messed up, and these guys in a span of time, is making it run like this. This is almost perfect. Almost perfect. So let's continue. There are still, still some things, maybe some graphical effects that won't come through yet. 
But they're working. They're working and they're working pretty good. Now where should I go? Wait a second. First class. Uh, let's try this. And here she is. Ooh, oh boy, in 1440p. Delicious. Up. The sacred mountain of Fimbleventer. I'm not gonna. The supposed to be the link between Inferno. I'm gonna. I'm gonna skip this because usually here you see a lot of. They say there is an entrance. There you go. I wasn't skipping it. I just kept getting out. Well, this one looks good. Is stuttering and I don't want to deal with that. As you can see, there's a little bit of flickering with some of the textures, but come on, guys, it's not 720p. And as amazing as it looked on the Wii U, and even more so on the Switch, it's kind of cool to see that you're able to play it at even higher resolutions. At least I get a kick out of that. Now this one might be more sluggish because of the fact that it's more like open world-ish. The Panther. There you go. Look at those water effects. Oh my god, it looks so freaking beautiful. And that tight little squishy water that you see in the bottoms of the screen. You know, it's really, really amazing. Uh, okay, now. Something over here. Let me get out of this one. Return to chapter select. I'm going to more one with more. I think this is the beginning. If we got cutscenes, nope. We got cutscenes. No good. No, 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 no. That's gonna take too long. Nope, it's not gonna let me. So, what I'm gonna do is going to stop it. This uh, a thing that this one has uh, that this one lacks actually and is the fact that every time you need to get out of the game you need to exit the whole software which is an inconvenience not really that bad but something to take notice of. Let's go one more time and go on to full screen again This time I know which one to choose. Yeah, whatever. Let's go to this one. Absolutely beautiful. And in 4K she looks much, much better.
get into the action. There we go. As I said, a little bit of uh, effects here and there are missing, but... This is why I never buy anything for sale. And it's still not quite at... 60 frames at this point, but it's it's almost there guys And for this quality to be honest Do that No bloat mom um, no motion blur getting in the way of the art design and this art design is freaking amazing there because I want to show you some others again you need to exit and go back all right so let's go into let's see how how much that did a change for for the game tell already that everything is a little bit more <coughs> spiffy now this one on the Wii U ran at, at 720 and the reason why uh, Nintendo was able to get it to look so beautiful in 720 is because they use some uh, special effects some techniques basically to, to hide some of the shortcomings like the aliasing and stuff like that and it looks super amazing on the Wii U. This however is kind of like taking away all those effects that you use to hide. Hopefully it'll pick up. Yeah it's starting to pick up. There we go. Now it really doesn't feel like you're playing in molasses and stuff. And it can get better. Thing is you need to... If I were to do it in 720, which is the uh, actual resolution, then I'm willing to bet that it's gonna... It's gonna be running perfect. Even so, in, in 1080p, it looks freaking awesome. And even though I'm not gonna go into how that works they do have a way of online play in case you guys were wondering and both Dolphin and Samuel they, they do have the capability to play the games that you have online they do it in a different way but they do have <coughs> excuse me the option 
Now in general settings, there's an online aspect. And mine is disabled because I don't want anything to do with messing around with my account. But you can do it if you are willing to do it. So that's an option. Now next up, uh, having some issues with Fast Racing Neo. This version doesn't run it very well, but I'm going to run something that will. Let's say... Let's do Smash. Let's pick a random stage. Some stuttering here and there, or freezes. But also bear in mind, when you run a game, send you for the first time you need to allow it to do those loads those um, say slowdowns because what it does is that it's reading like for the first time the shaders and basically the next time around you're gonna find that it's much much quicker and so it comes to the point where you have all the shaders that you need and then slow down mostly goes away completely and I am making an ass of myself here. Oh, oh, okay, I, I, I was saved. Okay, where's my controls? Here we go. Yeah, you're starting to get on my nerves. Now, camera mode works just like the game. Zoom in, do all the fancy stuff. You can focus on one character or the other. So, for all intents, intents and purposes, it's fully functional. icon. Oh, the smash icon. Now I forgot how to activate the... Doesn't matter. He wants to... He seems to be wanting to kill himself anyway, so... Get Mario World. Okay. Super Mario 3D World. World. Meow. Hmm. Oh, it's taking quite a bit. Now 
of course, I played the game to death on the Wii U. But the fact that it's running so good at this stage... All the effects are there. But with the difference that the internal resolution is at 1080p instead of 720, I guess. See that one works perfectly at 60 frames. This is showing here. Let's do one more before I end the video, and uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. What should I do? What should I do? Mm, there's still one that doesn't appear here. Let me see if I can load it. Because there's some in the format that it's here. Some don't appear on the menu. You need to go and open them directly from the folder. That case would be uh, Star Fox Zero. Practice makes perfect. something. Take it out. Let's go into the regular game and see. The name 
I know I'm missing something. There we go. This is the way that the game is played on the original Wii U, of course, with the two, with the pad view and the main view. I can go on full screen, but then the other screen is not going to show up, nor would it be visible for myself to, to see. weird oh you know what guys I'll figure it out and I'll do an update video because this one is not for some reason is not wanting to work out I don't want to leave the video on that note so to Donkey Kong. Now there was a version of this one that for some reason it did not, it didn't have the emulator, didn't have a uh, video player integrated. So the full motion video that you would get or the cinematics, whatever, inside of the game would not reproduce and it would like go all buggy on the screen they fixed that uh, adding some codecs and stuff to you know an actual video player and now it works perfectly Oh yeah, I'm using the gamepad, I forgot. This one looks and plays great. Through, through and through.
Go! <laughs> but yeah guys, as you can see, it it looks amazing. I think I'm running it in 20, uh, 1080p uh, tunnel resolution. It can go higher, but again, it did not run this smoothly. I had to first play it one time so it could get like the shaders all in order and stuff. But yeah, I mean now it's hard to tell the difference from the aside from graphics of course that they look much more sharper and more detailed. We got chip nanas. So yeah guys, that's gonna be all for now. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this kind of like walkthrough or walking with you through the Semio emulator. Uh, this is another tool that I'm going to be using uh, quite a lot in the next uh, upcoming videos and stuff like that where I'm going to be doing the retrospectives and I'm going to try to do some playthroughs on either Twitch or YouTube using these tools so bear with me. Uh, it's going to be trial and error but hopefully it's going to be plenty of fun and I'm going to be able to talk with you guys one-on-one -on -one and go through our memories and experiences of these amazing classic games so thanks a lot for watching see you guys soon and take care